Dear teacher training, almost everyone understands learning disabilities in an informal sense. However, about students who have learning disabilities, teachers, school administrators, parents, speech pathologists, psychologists, physicians and many others need to understand the term learning disability in a more formal way. They need to know what learning disability is, a distinct category of special education. They should have fundamental knowledge of the characteristics of individuals with learning disabilities. The causes of learning disability. How to assess learning disabilities, teaching methods for treating learning disabilities, and the long-term outcomes for individuals who have learning disabilities. When a mother is told that her son has a diagnosis of learning disabilities, she wants answers to a lot of questions. What caused this disability? How it might have been prevented? What is it like to have a learning disability? What can be done about it? How will this disability change my interaction with my child? Can he learn anything? Does this mean my child will not graduate from high school? Will he ever be able to take care of himself? What kind of job will my child be able to get and keep? Learning disability is one of many differences characteristics of people in contemporary society. Other differences include intellectual giftedness, cerebral palsy, athletic powers, emotional or behavioral problems, music ability, mental retardation, deafness, artistic talent, blindness and so forth. If we observe differences only in behavior, not in physical appearance, we may wonder whether the disability is real or imagined. We may also wonder whether our ignorances or bias is confusing the issue. To many people, learning disability seems less tangible than some other disability. Example, cerebral palsy. And therefore, some may wonder whether learning disability actually exists. Although students with learning disability may share some common attributes, there are many different types of learning disability. We will in this session learn about two of the most common learning disabilities. It should be pointed out that in many cases a student will demonstrate qualities which indicate a disability in a number of different areas, not just one. Let's learn about arithmetic disorder, also called as dyscalculia. It's generally characterized by difficult in learning or comprehending mathematics. It affects a person's ability to understand and manipulate numbers or understand numbers themselves. When can dyscalculia happen? Some children may experience dyscalculia as young as 4 or 5 years, old or even younger. They experience tremendous difficulties in learning math and it is a challenge for teachers also to teach them. Dyscalculia could also persist to older children like grade 7 and after this. The symptoms start to appear unnoticeable to parents since they are allowed to use calculators, but could be detected by very experienced math tutors by watching and examining their calculation steps. The most troubled area is when they have to do calculations backward such as finding factors or square root when a calculator is not allowed. Another sign is they never seem to be able to keep or get A regardless how much effort the math tutor has put in. This group of children 
has more trouble in solving word problems, although their computational skills may be all right. Symptoms of dyscalculia, some signs of dyscalculia or math disabilities are as follows. Writing. Some dyscalculia children have problems in writing correct numbers and counting numbers. So, right from the start, they already experience difficulties before getting into computations such as simpler additions or subtractions. They cannot distinguish curve and straight lines when writing numbers. For example, some children are confused about 2 and 3 because they are not sure if 2 has one half circle or two halves of a circle. 2. Reciting and counting, they cannot recite numbers fluently forward and can only recite from number 1. They cannot count backward from number 10 to 1 correctly or correctly saying the correct words. Even they can do 1 plus 1 is 2 and all of a sudden a few minutes later they might give the incorrect answer 1 plus 1 equals 1. They only understand when objects are used, when doing additions and when the objects are removed when they may have problems to get correct answers. So, by observing them I feel that it is very important we train them in reasoning and trying to get them to understand the reason behind all answers. Logic and pattern. They have difficulties in identifying patterns and the pattern concept. Almost does not exist to them. Any number of objects which require some logic will be very difficult for them. They could not understand even after being taught, so their ability of understanding logic is not high. Retention and review. It is not really their ability of can do or cannot do. Worries me, but way they solve the problems worries me. They can do well after repetitive instructions and practices, but just a few days later they would suddenly act in such a way that they seem to have never learnt before. They do not seem to have any retention. Also once they think something is right, then despite my teaching they are unable to change their thinking. For example, after I pointed out 5 is correct way of writing and I asked some of them to write and trace it 25 times, but at end they still wrote the wrong way. Reasoning, when not doing math, some of them may be very talkative, but all of a sudden they are very quiet when doing math and normally cannot give reasons on their own errors because they are very confused themselves. Even they know the answer of 5 plus 5 is equal to 10, they do not know what 5 plus 6 is when asked. Response time, they reply slower than non dyscalculate children and need more time to get any answers. They do not seem to be able to recall information being taught to them even a few minutes ago. Mental math, ability. Their mental math ability is weak and need to use fingers to physically count each number to get answers. They need to physically see and count in order to get answers. They cannot easily transfer the learning from counting to calculate in their brain easily. Sometimes they feel they do not have enough fingers to do math when going to grade. They do not have the initiate to understand number sense. They do not like repetitive practices despite the fact that they could not do them in speedy way and complain they are boring when asked to do. What can math educators and parents do to help? In most school math, teaching dot fingers beans are often used as manipulators for sequential forwarding or backward counting for teaching addition or subtraction. Children will have problems with the kind of techniques since they do not get the idea of part 1 plus part 2 is equal whole. So, when doing reverse of addition subtraction, it will be difficult for some children. They are taught to count, skip counting using dots or fingers, but are not encouraged to learn on how to add by relationships. 
logic and by comparison. They need to be taught on how to use methods to do additions or subtractions, not mainly by counting. It is important for parents to understand when a child is behind then it is more important to build the foundations instead of trying to catch up with the current school work. For example, if a child is learning tables but could not do carryover addition or subtraction at grade 3, then it is more important for the child to learn addition or subtraction and fluency before mastering the tables. Trying to catch upon the summer to learn tables will be a better idea. Parents play an important supervisor role and shall monitor their children's progress at home and make sure they do homework. Without doing homework, the progress is slow. Parents also need to encourage their children to work harder and willing to take on new challenges, for example, new worksheets or do some extra math work which they never learned at day schools. Parents should encourage their children to think and also do something which may not be their preferred thing to do like working on math word problems. A math chess workbook integrate puzzles and chess into math workbooks. So with this innovative idea and invention, we hope that it will not be bored for children to work on and will be more fun for them when compared to the traditional math worksheets. We will now learn about dysgraphia, a learning disability that affects writing expression. It is coined from Greek words dis means difficult, graphia means to write. Extremely poor. Handwriting is sometimes called as dysgraphia. Students may be unable to transfer the input of visual information into the output of fine motor movement. They also have difficulty in the act of composing. Characteristics of dysgraphia. Poor handwriting or writing, illegible, does not follow lines on paper, writes too small or too large, writes too light or too hard, pencil gripped incorrect, does not visually track writing, confusion with directionality, writes letters or numbers backwards or upside down, writes certain letters, numbers or words in mirror image, poor spelling skills, spells words differently in the same document, divorce for example may appear as divorce, divorce may appear as divorce say, due to confusion with directionality may reverse letters while writing therefore spelling mistakes. Difficulty with copying or completing work on a printed page, difficulty copying from a board, difficulty copying from a book or other printed material. Mixes capital letter and lower case letters inappropriately. Difficulty filling out forms, difficulty completing fill in blank worksheets, difficulty taking notes from oral presentation, writing is too slow to get lecture points on paper, reverses or ignores numbers, parts of sentences and or whole words when taking notes takes notes but unable to distinguish important information from extraneous information. That is, the child may go to write everything dictated rather than writing only important points from that. May have problems with grammar, syntax and organization. Demonstrates inconsistency memory for sentence mechanics, example lack of punctuation and capitalization. Persistent problems with sentence structure. Sentences may incomplete or syntax may be incorrect or disassociated. Does not have all parts of a well organized paragraph. Topic and supporting sentences. Transitional sentences. Demonstrates writing skills inconsistent with verbal abilities. Writes short and or simple essays even though he can verbalize more complex thought can verbalize answers to tests, but written answers are wrong, left blank or incomplete, oral vocabulary more complex than written vocabulary. 
kinesthetic and fine motor affects the ability to use the fingers efficiently, including poor pencil grip, difficulty in keyboarding and poor posture when writing. The child may not have chosen a dominant hand yet and neither hand is strong enough to write legibly. The weak fine muscles tire easily which causes a great deal of exhaustion, frustration and task avoidance. Organizational difficulties may have too many scattered ideas or one big idea with no knowledge of how to sequentially break it down into workable parts. The child may frequently get stuck with the beginning, middle or conclusion of his story and then promptly give up before seeking help. Symptoms of dysgraphia. The earliest symptoms of dysgraphia are noticeable long before the child starts learning how to read and write. At this stage, dysgraphia is characterized by delayed motor development and problems with simple tasks such as pulling up zippers or buttons. Children may also refuse to play coloring games which is normally enjoyable for their peers. Cannot correctly tie the shoelaces once a child learns how to tie his shoes. It does not take long for him to easily perfect this function. A child with dysgraphia however might show a reluctance to tying her shoes because of an inability to perform the function with ease. Dislikes writing. Most young people show no reluctance to picking up a pencil to write, draw or color. A child whose brain and hands are not communicating properly will be unable to use writing instruments the same way average kids can. Unusual grip on writing instruments. By the time a child is in second or third grade, they should be comfortable holding a pen or pencil. A young person with dysgraphia will never hold a writing instrument with ease unless their dysgraphia is addressed and treated. Their confidence can be severely damaged. This often can result in a lifetime of poor grades and dislike of school, learning and writing. Dysgraphia becomes more obvious during the school years when students affected by this learning disability express problems with writing. These problems are usually characterized by inappropriately sized and spaced letters, writing wrong or misspelled words or using both printed and cursive letters while writing. Another prominent symptom of dysgraphia is the irregularity in the size of the letters. This symptom is often accompanied with confusing the letters that look similar. For example, student with dysgraphia may often write B instead of D. Spelling mistakes and incomplete sentences are also very usual. Persons affected with dysgraphia will usually avoid writing as writing tasks cause them extreme frustration. They will usually hold a pencil in a complete unusual way and some of them may even report feeling pain while writing. One of the most telling symptoms of dysgraphia is a young person who has strong verbal skills but cannot write properly. Not only will the handwriting be sloppy but the way the young person will hold the writing instrument will be awkward. Words will alternate between cursive and block printing. Letters will not have a consistent shape or size. Written language can be divided into handwriting, spelling, composition, learning disabled, students often have difficulties in one or more of these areas. Handwriting, the mechanical component of written expression is called handwriting. It is the particular way in which some form letters with a pen or pencil. If a reader cannot understand the handwriting of an individual regardless of how well the passage is composed, its meaning is lost. Causes of handwriting errors. Poor high 
hand coordination, failure to integrate the visual image of the letter with the correct motor response, poor finer motor coordination, poor efficiency and control of the instinct muscles of the hand, disorders of visual perception, poor spatial orientation, difficulty in understanding concepts such as up, down, top, bottom which is important for correct letter formation, poor sense of directionality, gets confused with the strokes in forming letters, spelling is defined as the proper arrangement of letters into words that are necessary for the purpose of written communication. Spelling involves the ability to learn the correspondence between sounds and graphemes written letters. Composition is the visual presentation of thoughts, feelings and ideas using symbols of the writer's language. System for the purpose of communication. Written composition requires many related abilities including facility in spoken language. The ability to read, skills in spelling, legible handwriting or skills with computer keyboard, knowledge of the use of written usage and cognitive strategies to organize and plan the writing. Problems of written formulation are not manifested until the child has acquired the rudimentary level of reading and spelling. In the first and second grade, he is only expected to write only words or simple sentences. As soon as he can read more fluently and has been taught to spell, he is expected to read stories, write letters and answers to examination. It is at this time that those with written formulation difficulties begin to fail in school. Those with written language disorder may not be identified until they are in the third grade or even until they are in high school. Since written language is the last verbal system learnt, the reasons for later identifications are apparent. Children have superior auditory language, good reading comprehension and the ability to copy the printed word, but they cannot express their ideas in writing. Disorder of formulation and syntax vary both in nature and severity. In some instances, the greatest problem is ideation and productivity, while in others it is primarily syntactical. In majority, however, both are present. Children with disturbance in ideation and productivity are limited in output and use more concrete language. They may spend several minutes before initiating a simple sentence and finally give up with the comment, I just can't put ideas on paper. They can tell stories or relate incidents, but they cannot translate thoughts into written symbols. A disturbance of written syntax can occur in conjunction with a disorder in ideation or isolation. They have fluent use of spoken word. They make errors in the written form that they are not made in the spoken. The most frequent errors are word omissions, distorted word order, incorrect verb and pronoun usage, incorrect word endings and lack of punctuations. Disorders of written formulations are very frustrating. The student feels his inadequacy because the discrepancy between the knowledge he has acquired and the knowledge he can convey continues to grow. Often we hear a child lament, but I can't think of anything to write. Creativity does not merge in a vacuum. Broad and varied experiences are necessary, particularly for children who are unable to organize their thinking for written language. A developmental progression from concrete to abstract language has been outlined by Michael Bust. There are four levels of abstraction sequentiality, concrete descriptive, concrete imaginative, abstract descriptive and abstract imaginative. 
he stated that when ideation is bound to be observable, it is considered concrete. The more it is detached from the stimulus, the more it is viewed as being abstract. Concrete expressions include descriptive words, phrases and sentences directly related to this experience. Abstract language consists of figures of speech, metaphors, allergies or stories with a plot or a moral. Concrete descriptive, the child describes of all the concrete experiences he has had. Concrete imaginative, this is difficult for some children because of the stimulus bound tendencies. They react to only what they see and often refuse to generalize. Abstract descriptive, these children have difficulties with time and sequence, they are deficient in these aspects of behavior. The children are frustrated when asked to write the entire story. Abstract imaginative, the story should consist of plot, imaginative setting, occasional figures of speech and some connotation of moral values. There should be continuity from beginning to the end of the story. Grammar, grammar is the most difficult subject for students with learning disabilities. The reason for difficulties are numerous but of primary significance. Other problems of memory and abstraction. When a child learns about nouns, he not only must comprehend and remember the definition, but he must understand which words in our language do in fact represent a person, place or thing. This is not easy for many children who have symbolic disorders. A majority of dyscalculia cases experienced by individuals with average or superior intelligence are exclusively caused by failure to acquire math fundamentals in school. Worldwide math has the highest failure rates and lowest average grade achievements. Almost all students regardless of school type or grade cannot perform in math on par with intellectual abilities. This is not surprising because sequential math instruction requires a perfect command of acquired fundamentals. The slightest misunderstanding makes a shaky mathematical foundation. Because such a minute fraction of our intellectual potential is utilized, scientists believe that even the worst math performances can be improved considerably. Compensatory strategies and appropriately organized instructions remediate deficiency when a 5, 6 or 7 year old student is not cognitively ready to learn math concepts. Their early introduction will only result in negative experience and attitude towards mathematics and eventually math anxiety. Parents and teachers must wait until the child is developmentally ready in the meantime, continually providing plenty of varied informal experience that teach the desired ideas. But do not eagerly expect mastery of these concepts early on. Dysgraphia is a neurological learning disability ensuing from a cognitive struggle to express thoughts in writing and graphing. The affliction is commonly referred to as poor spelling and penmanship. The course of the discovery of this disorder and its symptoms is still in the early stages, but has progressed substantially. Doctors and psychologists have researched and administered treatments ranging from educational techniques, medicinal treatments. Some dysgraphia treatments have been argued to be more beneficial than others and some need further study to prove their effectiveness.